Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf back again for another painting video. Today I'm doing some more digital art. I'm going to start today with a gradation tool, kind of a neat tool to use here in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC and I have started with some darks, some dark gray, and now I'll move to a light brown on top of that. And once I figure this out, I'm going to move over to sort of a hazy green almost a white milky green had so much fun the other day creating some digital art in Photoshop and sharing it with you all that I decided to do another one right away couldn't help myself and uh, got right to work and began this painting that you will see today it's kind of a neat painting a sort of fantasy theme sort of like concept art concept art if you're not familiar with it is the sort of artwork that is created for films and for movies or video games and it is quick often sketch style usually very atmospheric some artists put a great deal of detail into their paintings others don't and it's just to give the impression of an environment or a landscape actually it's basically it's modern day landscape painting but with a function usually with a sci-fi or fantasy sub theme to it and i'm going to be creating a mountain path here sort of a pass between two hills very misty atmospheric piece somewhat like what i did the last piece i did but with a little bit more detail and depth added to it and i'm going to be thinking about creating this hill line so that it looks realistic I want the path to be in the center, moving away from the viewer, and maybe I'll put a little figure uh, walking along in his cloak, sort of a medieval inspired sort of idea. Okay, taking my eraser tool here, I'm gonna cut the path out, just like that. Such a cool program to use. I'm erasing, and by erasing, I'm creating the path, amazing. So bring this forward here, using just a mid-tone gray, I'm going to get something slightly darker and as the light source is in the far distance again in this painting everything closer to me should be darker and that's going to give me the illusion of depth everything nearby will be darker everything farther away will be lighter so immediately I put some darker layers down and it already looks like I have some distance also the perspective is correct having the large hills right next to me going up off the top of the canvas on each side and then they're coming to a point single point in the center single point perspective kind of a classic and it's very easy to do so even if you're a beginning artist this is a super nice way to get some amazing depth without a lot of effort this can also be applied to landscapes with rivers running through them if you want to be kind of standing on the river right in the center looking downstream or upstream you can create paintings that look just phenomenal with this technique bringing in some highlights in the distance as things get farther away from you in this painting I'm going to have them become lighter as they get closer to this light source that I'm going to be putting in I'm going to show you a few neat tricks and effects that you can create with Photoshop things that I've learned from other YouTube artists concept artists particularly that I've watched This is such a neat program, it can just do so much and so easily. I'm very impressed with it and I have been having a ton of fun using it to create these pieces. Taking my time, this is a real time painting video, it's going to take about a half hour to create this piece. So buckle up, it's going to take a moment but the end result will be worth the wait putting in a few small highlights here it's always good to vary as much as possible your brushwork and the lights and the darks this will give it a much more realistic result and prevent it from looking terribly blocky so that it's not uniform you don't want to have like just a light spot then a mid-tone then a dark it will look correct but it's not very interesting or realistic so we have to kind of mix some of the lights some of the darker areas and that's kind of what I'm doing here is 
figuring out where I want to put what colors and where do I need to put more darks and where do I need to put more lights like this forward hill on the right here need to be darker so I grab some darker gray and put that in needed some more depth and more layers I'm using a mixer brush I really like this brush a lot because it doesn't give perfectly straight blocks of color but allows you to leave little gaps inside of it and if you have it at the very large scale you can leave little bits of the under base color showing through of course at smaller scaling you won't see as much of the base color showing through at all putting in some lines where the rocks are changing maybe even some snow I'm not quite sure a lot of this is going to be obscured anyways when I come back in with the mist layer you'll see that okay just gonna even out some of this it's important to put down these lighter sections over top of the darker sections but if you go too stark with them and you don't vary it a bit it will look a little odd you can see on the right hand side I have my different layers already named and set up I started with the gradient layer then I'm gonna block in next I have some details and then I'm gonna go back with some shadow layers I'm grabbing a rock brush that someone created I forget which artist made these but uh, it's a little rock tool and I'm I like it because it gives it a sort of a texture and I can kind of smooth out some of what's going on here and give it sort of a misty effect because it's not going to be completely filling in as you can see it's leaving some holes and some variation and it makes it look a little bit more naturalistic just trying to find the right color give it more of an ambiance it's too light don't like that maybe something a bit darker here that's looking all right right now for these mountains I'm just trying to find the right mix the right balance this brush if you use it by itself makes a reasonable looking little rock that you could put in the foreground but using this tool in this way creates a variety and an ambiance that works really well not really using the brush as it was in first intended I'm sure the idea was to put it in one spot and click several times to strengthen the intensity of the color and the appearance of the rock. I'm using it a little bit more loosely. Putting in some darker sections here. And suddenly this is looking a lot more interesting, I think. Just trying to get this foreground rock looking correct. Once I get it in place, we can move on to the next step. I'm going to start to bring in this path here, light gray. I don't know about you, but these monochromatic paintings are so much fun to do. They're kind of a challenge. You don't have any color or that much color to play with, really just grays. And you can create such amazing looking pieces of art with just a few changes in gradation and saturation, the amount of white added to it. Pretty, pretty fun to do and it's kind of like drawing, I guess, in that sense but with cooler, fancier tools when you use Photoshop. Now I'm going to be bringing in a few light browns as we go along here. I've grabbed a cloud tool. This is a tool that I downloaded from someplace else. I forget exactly, but there's another artist that puts this out. I'm sure you can find it. And they made a bunch of naturalistic looking tools and one of them was this brush tool that looks just fantastic look at those clouds it makes amazing 
really happy with it and I'm using kind of a very light gray almost a white Looking for a chalk brush here, I believe. There it is. Gonna grab a light brown, put in a few hints of a different color. Very small brush. Just a few pixels across. Quickly sketching in some highlights on these forward rocks here. Same sort of idea covering up the sections and making them look a little bit more naturalistic. All you need is a few quick strokes, not being terribly careful or precise. I don't really care exactly how they look other than um, I'm really bringing out the light in the far distance. So it's going to be hitting the front edge for it facing inward and it will be darker behind. So I'm being careful to mimic that wasn't quite happy with how light that was. Too light. It's a little bit better. Sometimes the front can be the trickiest to get looking just right. It, sometimes it takes a few passes to get what you're seeing or trying to get in your head. Found a darker brown that seems to be working better for that section. Just bringing in a little bit of color so it's not quite so drab. It's pretty drab at the end because that's a misty morning, very low hanging clouds in this mountain pass. Just putting back in a few of these distant hills. I want to see more of them disappearing into the clouds. So an easy way to bring them back in is to just draw right over those clouds that I put in before. Yeah, it's looking better. Grab that rock tool again and just brush it over. Better. Much better. Now, a lot of this is done by practice. I've drawn quite a few mountains before, looked at lots of photographs, so knowing where to put this color, where to put that color. The rule of thumb, if you want to know that, is think about where your lights are. Wherever the light is hitting, that's going to be brighter. Wherever the shadows would naturally fall, that's where it's going to be darker. So when you're painting mountains or really anything, you need to know where your light source is. Because I picked the light source in the far distance, anything facing me is going to be dark. Anything facing slightly away from me will be brighter. So keeping that in mind when I'm creating these shapes, I can get some very nice effects. I'm taking a lighter white here, increasing the intensity of the clouds behind the mountains, going slightly across them, like so. I'm trying to find the right balance. It's very easy, i found, to overdo the clouds. Like right there, I went too far with it. It's a delicate balance to strike. You want enough so that you get the suggestion of the clouds, but too much and you'll ruin the effect. Now I'm not sure why I'm zoomed out so much. I think because I like it farther away from me, it's easier to see what it looks like as a thumbnail and make sure that I'm reading correctly. You should be able to see more or less what the painting is from this distance where it's all blending together nicely. If you can't tell what it is or it doesn't look quite right, then you know you have something wrong. So working from a further distance back 
from the canvas like this is really a useful tool. Now that I have everything looking about how I want it to look, I'm going to go on to the next part which is rather fun for me. My favorite part of the painting is making it look a lot more cinematic. Now it's very easy to do that here in Photoshop. This is what you're going to do. You're going to imitate the filtering that you see in a lot of modern films. And that is the idea of making higher contrast between the lights and the darks particularly using colors like orange, blue, and yellow. And you'll see a lot of those colors in modern films. And there's filtering added to a lot of them to give it sort of a cast. I'm going to choose the soft light tool on my layer. Again, this is a new layer. I've chosen soft light, and I've chosen kind of a darker blue. And you can see that I'm just brushing over really fast kind of a cast of blue. And the moment I do that, everything looks a lot more cinematic and vibrant. I'm really focusing on the corners here where it's gonna be darkest nearest to me. And just by doing that one effect, I have increased the aesthetic of the whole thing. Then I'm gonna choose another layer. This is a linear dodge I'm adding. I've chosen linear dodge. And then I've grabbed a very light creamy yellow and created sort of a halo-ish effect farther back. Not halo the video game, halo as in a glowing sphere. <laughs> I'm going to just make a few adjustments here. When you're trying to get the color just right and you're using the color picker tool, I've noticed that if you have an overlay layer on, it will change the color too much and it won't look quite right so I have to remember if I want to make changes to a color to take off those two layers by clicking the eye bubble thing on the left hand side of the layer selector area and then you can select with your color picker tool adjust that and then once you have it looking again how you want it you can just go back in and toggle them back on turned off for a second the soft light and the linear dodge the cinematic filters I'll put them back in in a few moments now the next step after adding these cinematic style layers is to go back and add in a few more details so I've gone back to my detail layer and I'm going to start putting in some trees you can see here I've begun with a very light brown and I'm going to start sketching in the trees and the limbs. Now I want a whole bunch of trees here. So I'm going to be overlapping a lot of these branches and put several large trunks, kind of getting smaller and smaller into the distance, helping again that illusion of depth. Adding another object closer to the front that's going to solidify and really pull everything near it closer to me. Right now, everything's pretty hazy. It's kind of hard to tell exactly where things are at. So if you can create a darker object like a tree right near the front of your painting here, near the front of the image close to you, you can really help pull the whole thing together in a much better way. I'm not being terribly careful as I'm sketching through this. I'm just sketching, really, literally sketching it really fast. It didn't look quite right or not perfect. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to cover some of this up anyways with some more smoke and fog. So it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to have the right suggestion of branches and trees and maybe multiple dead trees behind. The further I took this, the more I realized I had more than one tree going on. So I just put another trunk in the background and it will look correct. I first start with a very light layer of brown go to a slightly darker, more grayish layer, 
after that, and then I go to a very dark gray to finish the whole thing off and make it really pop. One neat thing you can do with Photoshop is you can open a new file, a new tab, and create structures like towers, or you could create whole ramparts of a big fortress. You can also do what I did and make a few figures. One of the figures that I have saved as a brush is uh, a little rogue with a nice billowing cloak behind him walking along this path and I've created him in a different file, copied and made a selection around him using my selection tool, my crop tool, and I've copied him and made him into a sort of a brush so I can just grab like a nice dark gray and put him right in as a brush. It's pretty neat. So you'll see me do that a little later. Taking some lighter brown there and added a few highlights. Just putting in some background trees, trying to find the right consistency and depth. A few more distant trees in there. You can already see how there's just so many going on. And they're slightly obscured by some of the mist. Overall, it's looking pretty good. Very happy with the overall aesthetic. There, I'm grabbing my rogue character, my rogue brush that I've created. Gotta find the right color there, so I grab some gray. Might go back over and make that a little bit darker. It's kind of faint. Taking my brush and adding in some darker clouds. If I darken up the sky above, it'll make the mountain on the left to be a little bit brighter. Putting in a little bit of forward fog here. also added a little bit more of the very very bright white on the left there to increase that effect. Here I'm going to increase darkness by one shade by clicking again on the same spot on my little character there. I'm going to zoom in here for a minute. There you're getting a better look at all the trees. And I'm going to take again that brown color, grab my chalk brush, just put in, in a few little details of the light hitting the side of his cloak. There, that's looking pretty good. Zoom out for a second. Add a few more in. I'm always amazed at the ease in which you can create such depth and detail with this program. I'm just using some basic brushes that someone has taken the time to create or already come with the program. There's lots and lots of people who make all these different kinds of brushes that you can download. Here's some of that darker gray, bringing in some definition to the bottom of these trunks as they're disappearing into the clouds there. Really, it's a simple idea, I've simply created I'm not doing anything terribly fancy with it, but it looks fantastic. It's very stylistic. It's very sharp. I think it looks pretty, pretty professional overall. And um, it was a lot of fun to create. So if you're a creative person and are in the mood to try something, I really strongly suggest you give Photoshop a try. It's a pretty neat program and I've been very happy with it. There's lots of programs out there for painters. And so 
Please just find the right one for you. I will let you all know that as of right now, I'm not sponsored by Photoshop, so I'm giving you my real reaction. I'm just having a great time painting today for you all with this program. I hope that you've enjoyed so far this painting video. I know that these digital art paintings are a little bit different for this channel. This style of painting is also a bit different than what I normally do. This sort of style, this fantasy style, is something that I've always been intrigued with, even from being a young teenager to now. Just adding in a few more spots here. Adding in a few faint, small lines with the chalk brush. Some darker sections here. Trying to get those trees to come forward more in the painting. Really gotten far away here. Sorry about that, guys. No, it's kind of hard to see. I'm just trying to get the right light look. There we go. You can see all the lines that I've added more naturalistic that way. Break up some of those layers a bit more. All right, we are almost done. Thank you so much for watching this painting video. I hope you've had a great time watching me paint and work on this painting. Thank you everyone who supports this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more of my artwork either on etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry. Again, that's etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry, as well as impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. That's my blog. Again, it's impulsiveartistry.blogspot.com. Head over there, leave me a comment. Love to talk to you and talk to you more about painting. Leave a comment below here on YouTube, and I hope that you all have a fantastic week. I've taken a eraser tool, added it to my clouds, and I've erased a few spots here so it's not perfectly solid on these limbs. Take some darker clouds and put them in. I've toggled off for a second my linear dodge light layer. Yeah, put it back on. It may look better actually without the linear dodge. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the comments if you like it better with it or without it. I think it looks okay without. One thing I can do and I did do after I finished painting was I adjusted the contrast settings a little bit. You can do in Photoshop because it is a photo editing program. And I went through and I darkened the whole thing up a bit. And so it looks a little bit better. There's a bit more of a contrast to it. Trying to be atmospheric and ethereal at the same time. Enough there so you get the idea of the image. Kind of a tricky balance to strike. Nearly done here. Just the last few final touches and we'll call it a day. Had a great time painting this painting for you. Thank you so much everyone who's watched this painting video. Please subscribe. Don't forget to like, share, and um, I hope you have a great week. Thanks. Here's the final piece.